was probably the only person rooting against Team USA. I was like, listen, get eliminated as soon as possible. Get Jonathan Quick out of these meaningless games. Coming to you pre-tape from the Best Coast Show Studios, this is the Best Coast Show. I'm your host, Albert Aguilera. That's my producer, Curtis Stage. Curtis, hockey's back in one week. It is. Uh, very exciting. Uh, we have a Kings episode today, Albert. We're going to be talking about World Cup of Hockey. What do we think about that? We're going to be talking off-season injuries for the Kings and players that are coming back, who's coming back, who's not coming back right away. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the Ontario Reign because we've got a lot of young players that are in the mix uh, in you know preseason hockey here. And that being said, we have a guest today. We do have a guest. And with the Ontario Reign, we need to have players that can fill spots who are taking absolutely no... Uh no hits on the payroll. Yes, you're very concerned yes, about that. Very concerned. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, but joining us live, but pre-tape for you guys at home, be the magic of the Skype, is the Ontario Rain Insider, Lindsay Zarnecki, everybody. Yay! Hey, guys. Lindsay, did you know that since the last time you came on our show, we are now the number one LA Kings video podcast? Emphasis on video. I only knew it because you told me, Albert, but congratulations on your self-proclaimed uh, <laughs> victory there. Super I'm going to take it. I'm going to take <laughs> Super it. Super self-proclaimed. <laughs> we, we were hoping that just catches on. That by, just... Look, listen, we're the only video podcast, so by default, it makes us number one. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yes, exactly. Good. Lindsay, well, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much for wasting your Wednesday morning with us. You're probably wasting your lunch hour right now, aren't you? I am wasting my lunch hour, but happy to be yes. here with you. <laughs> so we got the uh, World Cup of Hockey going on right now, and I hate it. Well, I don't know if it really caught on in the U.S., to be honest, and part of that has to do with uh, USA's pretty disappointing to, uh, performance here. Is that what you would think as well? Uh, no, I'm actually uh, pretty happy that the U.S. got eliminated immediately. I was hoping that uh, Team Europe and Team Canada would get uh, eliminated immediately. I didn't care about the other teams because the other teams don't contain any Kings players. Yeah, We got no one on Team Russia, no one on Team Finland. If those teams want to go out and beat the crap out of each other and get hurt, by all means, go ahead and do it. But I, Marion Gabrick is out a minimum of eight weeks because he decided to play in these meaningless exhibition games, and Kopitar is eating up more times on the ice than any other player on Team Europe, and I don't like that. Well, it's interesting that you say that because when I uh, talked to Daryl Sutter last week with a couple of media members, he was saying that he thought it was better that these guys were playing in more meaningful games this time of year. But um, in that same breath, I mean, we were all talking about how good Marion Gabrick yeah. looked. And then unfortunately, uh, that shot block he had in the semifinal against Sweden, he I guess he played through it the rest of the game, but now he's out eight weeks. So what, uh, what the NHL and what its teams thought would be kind of a worst nightmare situation uh, came true for the Kings, and it, it's definitely a disappointing start for Gabrick, a guy who was, you know, hurt late uh, late last season in February, didn't come back till the playoffs, and they really needed him in the lineup, and now it's going to be, you know, another two months till we see. Yeah, this is really dumb. This is exactly why I really, really, really hate these. They're not meaningful games. They're meaningless exhibition games. If I have you signed as a contracted player to my team, the only games that matter are the games that you play for my team. Not not Team Europe, this fictitious team well, that doesn't even have a national anthem. Well, on the other side of this, though, is that I think hockey's trying to figure out ways, and the NHL, figuring out ways to kind of make hockey more popular to the average fan. Listen and this to might the fans. Do that. Listen to the fans. Lindsay, agree or disagree that the NHL is the worst when it comes to listening to what the fans want? <laughs> No, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think what they were trying to do here was showcase their yeah. talent. I think they really did with that Team North America. I mean, you can't deny that they were fun to watch, right? No, they were fun to watch, and it was great. But it's not something I care to watch. Yeah. Like, listen, hockey doesn't start till October. Right now, I'm in baseball mode. I'm in NFL mode. Preseason's fine. But I don't want my players being put in a situation where they're going to get hurt and be out for eight weeks. That's dumb. I mean, thank God Jonathan Quick is still okay. I mean, the last, what, not last year, but three years prior to that, every year Jonathan Quick was going into the season coming off of some kind of surgery. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. We need to win Stanley Cups, not not World Cup of Hockey maybe this, trophies. Maybe this rest for Gabrick, and I'm going to call it rest. Rest? Oh, God. Uh, maybe this is good for him because then he'll have, you know, a lot more energy at the end of the season. So what you're saying is, like, hey, Gabrick, you get hurt once a year, get it out of the way now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Lindsay, now that we officially have a spot in the top six open because Marion Gabrick is out for eight weeks, who do you feel is going to be taking that spot or has the best chance of doing so? 
Yeah, there's there's a couple guys, but I think Mike Mersch is probably at the top of that list just because he is a winger, um, a guy who had a pretty good season last year in Ontario, uh, 24 goals, got a chance to make his NHL debut last season. Um, if you're looking for the straight swap as far as, you know, Gabrick Mersch, I mean, he's not a player like Gabrick as far as uh, his offensive ability and kind of the style that he plays. I'd compare him more to like a guy like uh, Dwight King, maybe not as uh, as big as King, but um, he's definitely a viable option. And I think now, you know, you see that injury to Gabrick, it does leave the doors open for some other guys to come in. Because hey, this offseason, you know, we lost Milan Lucic. So going in, we had to replace him on the on the top line. Now we have to replace uh, Gabrick. Who do you feel is going to fill in for Milan? Oh, I mean, I think the, uh, there's definitely a bunch of options. Mersh is probably at the top of that list, and then you have a center like Nick Dow. Those are both guys that made their, their NHL debuts last yeah. last season, so those are probably the two top guys to kind of look at right now in training camp as far as um, the guys that are coming up from the rain. He's been following Dowd for a while. He's, he's an exciting player. I mean, is he going to be somebody that's going to be able to score goals for us, though? I mean, is he going to be a... I mean, Lucic. Yeah, is his a, production going to make up for the loss of Milan or that of yeah. of Gabrick? Well, I mean, those are like all star players, <laughs> right? I mean, guys who have been in the league for a long time. I mean, uh, Milan Lucic is a is a huge loss for the Kings, but I think in turn, you know, they're looking for even more production from guys like Tanner Pearson mm-hmm. and Tyler Toffoli. I mean, we're not going to be able to replace a Milan Lucic with you know one of the guys up and coming uh, in the system that are just kind of getting their careers started at that level. But I think uh, the Kings are going to be looking for, you know, those those guys like Tanner and Tyler to kind of step up into those spots. Mm-hmm. And, and do you feel that uh, Forbert or uh, now Adrian Kempe would come up and play in the club year-round? Kempe hasn't, Kempe, I'm sorry, has not played for us at all at the NHL level. Do you feel any of these guys are going to come up for more than, you know, that cup of tea? Right. Well, with Kempe, I mean, I answer a lot of questions about him, and and, and rightly so. He's a uh, former first-round pick, and a lot of people are in, intrigued by him, and, and I, I don't really blame them. But he's pretty uh, a ways out, I would say. If anything, he's maybe more of like a mid-season, uh, late-in-season call-up for the Kings. Um, He's he's looking to build on his consistency in his game. He he's a, an attractive player by the you know the way he skates and, and the way he can score, but um, you know he had some times where head coach Mike Stuthers was uh, really hammering on him in, in post game interviews about his two way play, um, about his uh, you know some of the offensive lulls that he kind of got caught into. But you know at the same time you have to consider that he is very young. He just turned twenty about. You know, two weeks ago, um, he's a player who was in his first pro season last year in Ontario. But during that season, he left to play in World Juniors for his native Sweden um, out in Finland. And then when he came back, he really had a a tough time getting going again. And um, you have to think, too, that he's transitioning to uh, NHL ice uh, versus, uh, you know, that European ice, uh, the wider the wider ice sheet. So um, I look for him to really kind of build his consistency this year. I think that's what uh, head coach Mike Stuthers is looking for him um, to build on. There's a chance that maybe he starts playing some penalty kill minutes, which is something he never did uh, last season. So um, those are the big things with Kempe. I mean, I understand the intrigue, but um, the Kings aren't wanting to rush any of these of these young guys. So um, he kind of falls into that category. Now, you mentioned him you know, playing out in Europe and how the ice is different in Europe because it's, it's a wider ring. International rinks are a little bit wider. They favor pure scorers the way the NBA uh, international tournaments favor shooters versus guys that attack the rim. But the King system is a little different. If you're a forward, you're not a forward. You're a two-way forward. How different is that from the European system from right. our minor league system where it, it kind of I assume it kind of trickles down from Dean all the way down where it's like, hey, bro, you're a forward. We expect you to play some defense, too. Right. Well, and I think that's the biggest thing about the the rain and them being close to here. I mean, Mike Stuthers really emulates uh, the King system and that's kind of the way it is. And uh, talking, you know, during training camp to um, Mike Fuda, who, who works in development uh, with the Kings, um, he's, he was talking about, I mean, a different forward, but talking about how important the two-way play is and that, you know, you're never going to get a chance to really play with Daryl Sutter until um, you have that kind of stuff down. So, 
Um, it's definitely something that the Kings uh, watch for. I mean, they're, they have a close eye on these players now that they're just, uh, you know, an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever down the road with traffic. But, um, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, they need these guys to be, be two-way players to play in the system uh, that they that they use. Which, uh, Lindsay, which, which rain players do you have your eye on here at the preseason, start of the season? I mean, Sunday was the... Was the uh, ex- Kings versus was Kings. The Kings versus Kings. And did the anybody Kings st- won in a shootout. The Kings won. Did in a shootout. And it wasn't really a game necessarily. <laughs> they had a bunch of different kind of scenarios, That's right? Like a there split was, squad type of deal. Yeah, which players are standing out for you right now? I know it's early and it's tough to kind of tell maybe, but w- what players are you looking at that could maybe even have an early impact or maybe even make the Kings roster? But what rain players are you looking at right now? Um, well, specifically guys that, you know, have the chance to probably make the Kings on defense. I mean, Albert had talked about Derek Forbort already. Uh, Kevin Gravel is another, uh, guy that really could make the Kings this year. Um, so those two defensemen, I mean, Forbort, if he, um, isn't able to make the team out of camp, if he has to go down, he has to go through waivers. So that's a whole, a whole nother thing. Gravel doesn't have to go through waivers. So, um, I think the it depends on how they do in camp and that sort of thing. But if you're talking specifically about the rain, um, Paul Ledoux is a very interesting uh, defenseman for them this year. Um, Kings fans and the organization obviously very high on him. He won an NCAA championship last year with the University of North Dakota. Kind of a smooth skating uh, defenseman, a lot of offensive upside. So I think he's going to have a, a huge impact on the rain. Um, this season, but as far as just rain specific players, the guys that I'm looking at are uh, Johnny Brodzinski, Joel Lowry, um, Adrian Kempe, of course. Uh, we already talked about him, but um, Justin Auger, guys that are looking to uh, maybe take expanded roles this season, just due to the fact that there's a good chance that you know Mike Mersch and, and Nick Dowd, guys who were uh, key players for Ontario last season, that would have a chance to make the Kings. Now, uh, do you think uh, this year? Daryl Sutter is going to be forced into having to play younger players because of the cap space, because of injuries, because we have no depth at defense. In, uh, is, is, is he going to be forced to, like, hey, say, hey, Scuderi, sorry, bro, you can't play 23 minutes a night and give someone like Forbert or Gravel or someone else time on the ice that's not 38 years old? <laughs> well, it's true. It this is. Guy's, okay, look, Daryl Sutter's like Byron Scott, who he doesn't is. believe in playing young players. Only difference is that Daryl Sutter has won championships. Byron Scott didn't do shit. Yeah. Well, if you haven't read it already, John Rosen, LA Kings Insider, he wrote a great piece about about the def- at the de- about the defense, excuse me, um, and just you know who's up for those battling battling for those positions. And, and you're right. I mean, those some of those veteran players. I mean, do you see them go down to Ontario? Or are the doors open for guys like like Forbort and Gravel? And I think we really will see that in camp. Um, there's been a lot of battles and, uh, even more so battles now because these guys are getting, uh, even more of a chance because Dowdy and Muzzin are playing for Canada. I mean, yeah. those guys are gone. Um, there's more opportunities during these preseason games to, to really shine. Yeah. Canada needs to sweep team Europe and this as soon as possible. Just get done. Just get it done. I don't want to risk Dowdy or Muzzin getting hurt. And, and, you know, speaking of the defense and, and Derek Forbert, and I've spoken to you, um, a lot of you guys don't know, but Lindsay and I actually were colleagues. We worked together at Fox. Um, we've had these conversations about Derek Forbert, and you know how I feel about this guy. We drafted him in 2010, 16th overall. We passed up on Tarasenko, who went 17th overall, and Tarasenko is one of the best players in the league. When is Derek <laughs> Forbert going to be one of the best players in the league? When is he even going to play on the well, team full-time? Well, they've been pretty... <laughs> when is he going to play on the team full-time? It's apples and oranges, really, <laughs> with, with the comparison. I mean, I hear you, but I think this is his year. I mean, if it's not this year, uh, we might see him maybe go to to another team. But, I mean, like you said, a 15th overall pick uh, by the Kings in 2010. Um, he's been great for Ontario. He won a Calder Cup with them two seasons ago before, uh, the, you know, the franchise moved from Manchester to Ontario. So, uh, and last year he was a top four defenseman. He was paired with Gravel. And, uh, you know, he played. He was an all-situations guy. Um, a, lo- a lot of penalty killing for sure. And, um I think his future is really in his hands right now. If he can, if he can perform well in training camp, he can get a spot on the Kings out of camp, just like he did a season ago. And, you know, he was sent back down to Ontario last year, uh, pretty much permanently when the Kings traded for Luke Shen. Um, and then he was back down the entire time. So, 
Um, it'll be an interesting season for him. We'll kind of see where he where he lands out of camp. Well, I was telling Curtis uh, earlier before we started the show how uh, back when the Dodgers had drafted Clayton Kershaw, they drafted him fifth overall, and then the Giants go and they draft Tim Lincecum yeah, yeah. seventh overall. And for the first few years, Dodger fans were raging. They were like, why would you pants on Lincecum? Blah, blah, blah. And Cy now, Young winner. Yeah. yeah, Cy Young winner. And now it's kind of like completely reversed where Tim Lincecum is non-existent. Clayton Kershaw is the best pitcher like ever. Clint Kershaw is a better pitcher than Pedro Martinez was in 1999. So I'm hope- saying it right there. So you're hoping I'm this- hoping this forward Tarasenko thing kind of happens. <laughs> like, we need this to happen because our defense has been garbage. No, I don't want to. No, let me not rephrase garbage. that. Our defense has not been garbage. Our defensive depth <sighs> yes. has been garbage. A lot of pressure on A lot the of defense. pressure on our top four guys, on Martinez, yep. on Muzzin, on, on Dowdy, on whoever the fourth guy is because we kind of always alternated him ever since, uh, um, what's his face, decided to beat up his wife. Oh, yeah. I already forgot his name. Good. I don't want to remember him. Voinov. Voin- 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 that yeah. jerk. Ah, oh, Voinov. Hey, were... Well, and two, you have to remember the Kings brought in uh, Trotman in the offseason as well as Tom Gilbert. So those are veteran, uh, you know, Gilbert, a veteran guy who could be fighting, you know, with Skidari and Greener for those That's minutes. True. But should, I mean, okay, Skidari and Green, should, I know Skidari is his last year on contract, but these guys are in their late 30s. Like, they're slow. They're flat-footed. They can't skate backwards. They have no offensive prowess. None. None. Okay, but maybe we, they're good team guys. I'm sure they're good team guys. Yeah. A big, I mean, hockey's not just about... I, there's so many intangibles. There is hockey. a bunch of intangibles. That's why I love Dustin Brown. Yeah. But you can't tell me that a dude that's in his late 30s is going to be able to compete with any of the kids that were on Team North America. Okay, true. Yeah, you're going to get fucking shredded. In terms of speed. In terms of speed yeah. and, and hand-eye. Okay, so we don't have a backup goalie. <laughs> the season starts in a week. Oh, we got Je- they got Jeff Zadkoff in the off season. Okay, so he's gonna start. On- he's gonna come up and start on the LA Kings roster as our backup. He's expected to. Yes, uh, Jeff Zadkoff uh, played last season with Pittsburgh, won a Stanley Cup. Uh, you know, lim- limited time as as a backup goalie there, but um, spoke with him last week. Um, He's a guy who was drafted by the Kings originally in 20, uh, 2006, I'm sorry. And um, he gives a lot of credit to Bill Ranford and the Kings uh, development staff as far as uh, his goaltending techniques and that sort of thing. Um, he, he broke into the NHL with the Penguins, but um, now he, he wanted to come back. Uh, Kings got him in free agency, signed him to a two-year deal. He's expected to back up Jonathan Quick. And I thought, um, you know, speaking with him along with um, other media members uh, last weekend at camp, he seems to have a level head on his shoulders, seems to understand, you know, what uh, comes with backing up Jonathan Quick and what comes with that is really not playing, you know, that many games. Um, He said that he understands the situation and that, you know, he's playing against arguably the best goalie, um, or if not the best goalie, one of them in the league, and um, he just wants to be a good teammate. He's familiar with a lot of these guys. Uh, he went to college with Alec Martinez. So um, he seems to be happy to be back and seems to feel like he wants to, you know, really pay back the organization that, you know, helped develop him uh, when he was younger. And led him to win a Stanley Cup with the Penguins last year. Yeah. He could win one here. I mean, that would be a really great way of paying back the organization, <laughs> helping win one here. Now, um, hey, listen, I'm excited about the 50, we're 50 years now with the Kings. 50 years. The Kings have introduced their, their jersey, the 50, do the rain have like a special jersey this year? Does, are they celebrating anything along with the Kings? Uh, they, when I spoke to Darren Abbott, the rain president about that, he said that they were kind of letting that, um, you know, the Kings kind of celebrate their own thing and, you know, any way that they're incorporated later in the season it might be a possibility but they're as of right now there really isn't isn't anything planned um as far as that goes albert's got to get a new jersey i mean I he's, get a new he's jersey. in line for new jersey adidas is taking over and they wanted to put sponsorships on the jerseys and oh. i said if you do that i will never buy another jersey ever again i already own like eight but i do not own a i do not own a kopitar jersey and so you better i'm thinking, get one now i'm thinking my 50th <laughs> anniversary jersey will be uh, a kopitar jersey yeah but I'm really, 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 really hating, really hating the stupid All Star Game logo. Have you seen that garbage? I've seen it. I don't. I don't mind it. A logo is a logo. <laughs> I mean, listen. As Kings fans, as Kings fans, we're on the internet all day trolling people, and we troll people on a nightly basis with better graphics than what was created. It was like, hey, NHL, this is like the city of 
city of, of entertainment, city of graphic designers and, yeah. and entertainment people and cinematographers and all that good stuff. Why not let us design it? Why did you let someone in, in the NHL headquarters do it? This is awful. It's not that bad. You just don't want it on the jersey. No, I don't want it on the jersey, and it looks ugly. It looks like something out of 1990 Saved by the Bell intro. <laughs> it, does, it does. It does look a little It cheesy. does a little 90s but cheesy. But I like the jersey, though. I like the, the gold. The jersey's cool. The gold is but, cool. But uh, the Penguins actually celebrate their 50th anniversary this year, too. Oh. But we got the All-Star game because no one wants to be in Pittsburgh. Let's no. start doing Pittsburgh. They don't. But they have a championship. They have a Stanley Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, let's go bold predictions. Lindsay, I have a bold prediction this year for the LA Kings. Tyler Toffoli scores 40 goals. Ooh. Yes or no? Oh, man, I'm not, I'm not good on predictions. you got to get John on here to do something Bold like that. Well, John won't <laughs> speculate. John doesn't like to speculate. <laughs> bold prediction. Tyler Toffoli scores 40 or more goals this year. Curtis, bold prediction. I do not think he's going to score 40 that goals That is not a bold more. prediction. I, I think he'll be at maybe, maybe 28 to 30. That's that's my prediction. Out of way to set the standards low. I mean, I like the bold predictions, but our bold predictions are not going well. Uh, with our my other... bold predictions with the Rams are doing pretty good. <laughs> We're in first place. The Rams yes. are in first place right now. What, hey, um, Lindsay, if we come out to Ontario to see a rain game, what what kind of fun can we expect out there? We know what Staples Center is like during a Kings game. What do we expect? Because we want to get fans out to the Ontario because they're going to see a lot of young, good players that are going to be coming up. What kind of things can we expect out there at, at that arena? You know, it's a, it's a great arena as far as uh, the sight lines are. I mean, there's really not a bad bad seat in the house, and that's kind of what every fan says when, when I've talked to them. I mean, the, where the press box is, we're basically as high up as you can be, and, you know, you're really on top of the ice. Uh, it's a g- great view. I, I mean, obviously a cheaper cheaper ticket than yes. coming to a Kings game. And, and to be honest, the quality of play is, is very good. I mean, fast skaters – Every, everything you would hope for as far as like the raw rivalries go, I would recommend if you're going to come out, maybe come out for like a Friday, Saturday night game uh, when the Rain are playing the goals, the Ducks affiliate. Those seem to be always be like fiery games um, with good crowds, too, because the goals uh, fan base uh, tends to come around as well. And it, it's a lot of fun and, and a cheaper ticket. So I would certainly recommend it if you can uh, brave the traffic. And the parking's probably a lot. Well, I live in Long Beach, so yeah, it'll be easier the, the, for me. Yeah, and the but, parking's probably a lot cheaper out there than it is by Staples. <laughs> it is. Well, uh, yeah, you're not trying to park like blocks away and you know yeah. walk uh, t- uh, ten minutes to save five bucks. Exactly. Um, Albert, what is our gift of the day? Guys, our gift of the day is the only good thing to have come out of the World Cup of Hockey, and that is the ref cam. Uh, what you're looking at here is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? I totally want the ref cam. Yeah, the ref happen. cam is great. See, the, that's Crosby's the one thing that came, good that came from the World goal. Cup of Hockey, guys. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. Good. Even Lindsay agrees. That's the only thing that came out of it. Uh, this is Sidney Crosby scoring the sick ass goal from the view of the refs. I mean, I like this. We should incorporate this. This is fun, but they only incorporate it for uh, the replays. It's never live. That's fine. I'm fine. With the I'm okay with that because I'll get dizzy. On you know what they live. need to do? I, I really like the idea, but they need to expand on it. It can't just be a stiff camera on his helmet. It has to have a gimbal. Swivel gimbal. So, yeah, yeah, so that it doesn't rattle. And then they can make it follow the puck. Correct. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, guys, but that's all the time we have on our show. Lindsay, thank you again for coming on and wasting your lunch with us. You guys can stalk her on Twitter at Rain Insider. You're going to get all the news and updates and articles from all of our minor league affiliates. Uh, Lindsay, anything you want to say before we let you go? That's it. Thanks for having me. Hopefully we get Thanks, awesome. Lindsay. a World Series title thank you for coming from the on. Dodgers. That's about it. <laughs> that's what we need. We need a World Series title from the Dodgers. You, you need that, that. Guys? Thanks, Lindsay. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's been our show. Don't forget to stalk us on Twitter, at Best Coast Show. Find us all over the interwebs with our uh, BTS on the Instagram. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and really wherever podcasts are heard. So uh, that's been our show, and you guys have a good night.